Hello there, and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at differentiating vectors, so we can answer questions from exercise 8D. So we're looking at differentiating vectors with respect to displacement, velocity, and time. If we think about the rate of change of displacement, then that's equal to the velocity. And if we think of the rate of change of velocity, then that's equal to acceleration. So that's how we're going to be using differentiation here. And we're going to be doing it with vectors. We're going to have an I component to our... Um, displacement or velocity, and we have a j component to our displacement or velocity, and we're just going to differentiate both parts of that. In the next video, we'll see how we can integrate to go back upwards from acceleration to velocity and velocity to displacement. So, let's go through a question then. We have a particle of mass 0.8 kilograms is acted on by a single force f. Relative to a fixed origin o, the, the position vector at p the position vector of p at time t seconds is r meters. So this here is a displacement vector. It's an s equals um, 2t cubed i plus 50t to the power of minus half j. So we can see here we've got an i component to our displacement and a j component to our displacement. And we've got some straightforward questions. Find the speed of p at t equals 4, find the acceleration of p at t equals 2, and find the value of f when t equals 2. So, at the moment we have a displacement vector. We need to work out a speed at t equals 4, so we're going to need to differentiate this. And the way you do that is you just differentiate the i component and the j component separately. 2t cubed differentiates to 6t squared, and 5t to the power of minus a half differentiates to minus 25t uh, to the power of minus 3 over 2. So now let's plug in the value 4 and we'll get a velocity vector at that point in time. Simplify that answer there and you get 96i minus 3.125j. But now we obviously need to work out speed. The way we go from a velocity vector to a speed value is by doing a little bit of Pythagoras calculation. There it's the magnitude of the velocity vector. So doing the Pythagoras calculation there, you get 96.1 meters per second as a speed. And hopefully we've got the hang of this by now. That This thing here is speed and this thing here is a velocity vector. Okay, so velocity vector speed and it's a case of Pythagoras theorem to move from the velocity vector to the speed. Moving on to the next part then we have the velocity and then we want to work out the acceleration of p um, when t equals 2 so we're going to have to differentiate again then so kind of the second derivative on our original equation or we can just differentiate the velocity that we've already got. So doing each of the components separately, 6t squared differentiates to 12t, and this part here differentiates to plus 37.5t times minus, so to the power of minus 5 over 2. And we want to work out the acceleration of p when the vector is t, so when the um, value for time is equal to 2. So plug the value for 2 in, and we get a is equal to 24i plus 75 root 2, over 16. Now we leave it like that. If it said find the magnitude of the acceleration, we would have to do a bit of Pythagoras calculation there, but acceleration is fine to leave as a vector. For the final part here, in part C here, we want to find the value of f when t is equal to 2. Uh, and we're going to use vectors here. We're going to have uh, f as a vector, a as a vector, and m will just be a numerical value. That's the mass of 0 0.8 kilograms. So substituting the value in, we want to work out f, so leave that alone. m is 0 0.8. We worked out the acceleration when t equals 2 was this thing here. Multiply out the brackets, and you get 19.2i plus 15 root 2 all over 4 newtons. So that's the force there. We've got 19.2 acting to the right, and we've got 15 root 2 over 4 acting in the j component. Great, so there we are. That's all we need to do for this question here then. So it's just differentiate the i's and the j components separately and solve the questions that you're given. Pause the video and try this question out. Okay, so let's get straight into it then. At time t seconds, the particle has a position vector, so this is a displacement vector um, of this thing here. 
Find the speed of P when T equals 2. Well, if we've got a, um, a position vector here, then we need to differentiate it to get to a velocity vector. 4t squared differentiates to 8t, and that's for the i components. The next part is going to be 24 minus 3t. Whoops, no, that's going to be differentiated to 6t. 3t squared differentiates to 6t on the j components. Lovely. And now we need to work out the speed when t equals 2, so we'll plug the value of 2 in. So v here is going to equal 16i plus, uh, so plug in t equals 2, and that's 12. 24 take away 12 is 12j. Lovely. And then we need to do just a Pythagoras calculation to get speed. So it's going to be 16 squared plus 12 squared, and I'm pretty sure that's equal to 20 meters per second. Lovely, so there we are, that's the speed at t equals two. Part B here is show that the acceleration of p is a constant and find the magnitude of this acceleration. So differentiating again to get a, and it's gonna be eight i minus six j. And this is a constant, there is, there is no t's in our acceleration here, so because this vector is not in terms of t. What that means is it doesn't have t in the equation. The acceleration is constant. The acceleration is constant. And now we want to find the magnitude of uh, this value here, so it's going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, and it's going to equal uh, 10, 10 meters per second squared. Lovely, excellent. I'm just going to do a bonus question on the side here, because it is one that comes up uh, quite often. It will be, uh, part C will be, find the time at which um, the particle here is traveling due... Uh, due east. So find the time it's traveling due east. That's not is perfectly in a position due east compared to where it was before, it's the time at which it is traveling perfectly due east. Okay, so if it's traveling due east, then it's traveling in this direction here. That means there are no j components here. It's not going up or down by anything. So we're going to take this velocity vector here, and we want to set the j component of this equal to 0. So in this case here, t is going to need to equal 4. Why is that? Well, because the value of t equals 4 will give you a j component of 0. So that will be the time at which the particle is traveling, or its velocity is in a direction due east. And you get a lot of questions like that. Um, so just remember that if you're east and west, actually it's your J components that's nothing. If you're north and south, then actually it's your I components that you set equal to zero. Um, because you don't, for, for north, you don't want to be traveling um, left or right by anything, just up or down by some value. All right then, so that's the answer to this question here. Then add a little cheeky bonus on the side. Have a go at questions from exercise 8D, page 171. Have a go at the exam style questions, the problem solving style questions, and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.